the 2020 BMW 228i Grand Coupe or Coupe versus the 2020 BMW 330i. Aloha guys, it's Joe Tunney and I'm visiting my very good friends here at BMW of Hawaii in the beautiful city of Kona on the big island of Hawaii. And I had an interesting thought that for a customer uh, looking at BMW but not wanting to invest a king's ransom in something, what is my best option in BMW in the low $40,000 range? I don't want to break the bank and go over $45,000. What does BMW have for me and in my budget? Well, they have two really fabulous quality sedans, the 228, uh, this case the X-Drive 228, that means all-wheel drive, which is a big deal uh, on the 228 series because 228s otherwise are front-wheel drive cars. So the X-Drive gives you that rear-wheel drive uh, experience in an all-wheel drive car that you just kind of get standard and you've always gotten standard on all three series to this point. The 330i, a high-performance rear-wheel drive car, both of them come with high-performance four-cylinder turbocharged engines. Now, both the 228i and the 330i have BMW's B48 modular four-cylinder engine. Different versions of the engine, but the same overall concept. This one puts out 228 horsepower to go along with 258 pound-feet of torque. This version is the same version you find in many of the John Cooper Works Mini Coopers, for example. It also gets fabulous gas mileage. This one gets 36 miles per gallon out on the open road. Car and Driver does a test where they take the car for 75 miles an hour and just head out on the freeway for a while and see what it'll do. It actually got 37 miles per gallon out on the open road, according to Car and Driver, at 75 miles per hour. Let's take a look at the 330i. Now, horsepower goes up just a click in the 330i, 255 horsepower to go with 295 pound-feet of torque. Remember, the 330i is a little bit bigger than the 228i. It's about 7 inches longer and 1 inch wider. So even though it has more power, both cars actually go 0 to 60 in right around 5 seconds. An interesting side note about this version of the B48 motor. When Car and Driver did its test, 75 miles an hour, this car with more power actually got 42 miles per gallon at a consistent 75 miles per hour. That's the all time record in car and driver for a small luxury car, including European diesel engine small luxury cars from makes like Jaguar. This engine is the same variation that you find in the four cylinder new body style Toyota Supra and the Morgan, uh, Morgan Plus 4. That's a car that we don't talk about all the time in the United States, but still a really cool car with this very engine. Now, stylistically, both cars come from the same school of thought and both of them are super, super nice looking. One interesting side note is, believe it or not, this little strip of real estate right here. BMW, as long as I've been alive and then some, has used a technique called the Hoffmeister kink in honor of the person who styled all of BMW's cars throughout the 50s and 60s and into the 1970s. And all BMWs forever have had a style feature where this piece right here actually goes farther out and then comes back around. This is the first BMW in 60 years without the famed Hoffmeister kink. Just a little bit of trivia right there. So in the case of the 3 Series, more typically this is what you've seen from BMW forever, where this arch actually extends out before it comes back. It's a small feature, but now every BMW that you're going to look at for the rest of your life, you're going to see if it's there or not. Let's take a look at the trunks. With just a push of a button, either trunk opens wide. The 228i checks in at 15 cubic feet of cargo space. So for a front-wheel drive biased car with all-wheel drive in a small configuration, that's actually a pretty generous trunk. Keep in mind, cars like the S-Class Mercedes-Benz, the trunk space on that is 18 cubic feet. Not so different than what you're seeing right here. Let's take a look at the 330i. Now, the 330i checks in at 17 cubic foot of trunk space. Well, 
it's really a nice size. In fact, it's not just a nice size for a small car. It's big. It just physically has a really big trunk. I know the difference between 15 and 17. It's not that big of a difference. It just feels a lot more confidence inspiring having a big trunk like this if you're going to go load up at Home Depot or something like that or Costco or a big weekend getaway or what have you the more generous trunk is a big plus in the column of the 330i sitting in a comfortable position you realize right away the 2020 BMW 228i is a very comfortable experience inside now this one has the premium package so it has the panoramic moonroof heads up display it has a lot of nice features the panoramic moonroof being my favorite it's one of my favorite features in any kind of car in the world but great steering position great seating position great visibility you know it's a sculpted vehicle so you're always worried that the headroom's going to stink i'm six feet tall 175 pounds and i'm super duper comfortable in the front seat of the 228i Jumping into the back seat, again, six feet tall, 175 pounds, a little bit too small. Uh, no other way to say it. It's a little bit too snug to get comfortable for any length of a trip. Now, there's some great advantages to the 228i, especially in the X drive over the 330i in rear wheel drive. If you live in an area where there's snow and you're still trying to keep it in that low $40,000 range, the way I'm trying to do here, well, having all wheel drive over rear wheel drive, of course, that's gonna be something that's alluring to you. However, if I'm just comparing price for price, this back seat, it's going to be a deal breaker for me because it's just a little too small in the 228i. Now, if I had little kids and I was leasing the car for a few years, maybe that's a different story. But if I'm going to bring full-size grown-ups in the back, mm, this one's not going to work. Now, getting comfortable in the front seat of the 2020 BMW 330i is a very easy thing to do. It has virtually the ideal driving position, lots and lots of room. Uh, it has a certain kind of a spacious ambiance to it, distinctive from the 228i. Personally, I prefer the snugness of the 228i. It's just a more intimate driving experience, but there's no faulting the generous space up front in the 330. Let's take a look in back. Now, the wheelbase in the 228i Grand Coupe is 105.1 inches. In the 330i, it's 112.2 inches. That seven inches of extra length between the, the studs of uh, the front and rear wheels, it really uh, lends itself to having a more spacious interior at kind of those critical measurements. And this is that critical measurement right here. It is much, much more spacious in the back seat in the 330i than it is in the 228i. Lots of headroom theater style seating so that the people in the back can really see what's going on through the windshield. If you have passengers, especially full grown passengers sitting in the back, it's a no brainer. The 330i is going to be vastly more comfortable. So despite having lower horsepower numbers than the 330i, the 228 is actually super quick. Let's take a look. Zero to 60 and 5.1 is really, really good. One big difference though between the two cars is the braking system. We're gonna find out right about now. The 228i goes from 70 miles an hour to zero miles an hour in about 175 feet. That's not gonna to win too many competitions. Now remember, this is a front-wheel drive based vehicle, although this X-Drive model has all-wheel drive, and it also has smaller all-season tires as opposed to high-performance tires. That makes a big difference in overall handling and braking numbers. Handling is also a distinctive feature between the 228i Grand Coupe and the 330i. This one comes in at about 0.85 Gs of lateral acceleration. Now, in this low 40s price point, this particular 2020 BMW 330i comes in at $42,000 roughly. The no features like panoramic moonroof and heads up display, but a driving experience that is unrivaled in the industry. And let's take a look at the acceleration first. Superb acceleration 
no body slouch, no rear end squat, no anything like that. Just taut and safe and wonderful. Now let's take a look at the brakes. Big difference between the two there. Braking, as we said in the 228i, is right around 175 feet from 70 miles an hour to zero. In the 330i, it's 152. 23 feet is a giant difference between smacking somebody hard in front of you and missing the situation altogether. And of course, in a perfect world, you'd just rather steer clear of trouble. And again, the G-forces that the 228i is uh, able to deal with is 0.85 Gs of lateral acceleration, where the 330i tests as high as 0.94 Gs. And so a huge check in the box for the 330i. For me, I love the 228i. I love that coupe four-door look. I've loved it since Mercedes popularized it with the CLS a million years ago. I love the X6 and the X4. I just like the look of them. But in this competition between these two cars, despite the 228i having more features for the money, things like panoramic moonroof, which I absolutely adore, all-wheel drive, which is a great feature, and similar pricing, it's the easiest pick I've ever made in my entire life. The 330i is hands down the superior car. In fact, it's not just a better car between the two. This is the preeminent sports sedan in this price point in the world. Audi makes a heck of a car. Jaguar makes wonderful cars these days. Alfa Romeo makes competitive cars. And of course, Mercedes, who is BMW's arch rival, makes some fabulous cars in this price point. But it's been this way for generations and it continues to be this way to this very day. There's literally nothing that beats the 330i, not even other cars in BMW's lineup. And if you have any questions about this car, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at joelovesawaii at gmail.com or reach out to my friends at bmwofhawaii.com anytime. Thank you so much for taking a look.